been practicing for 13 years and I've noticed the incidence of diabetes increasing, especially type 2. Um, so obviously diabetes can affect the eyes in various ways. But the one thing my patients tell me that of all the senses that they dread to lose, eyesight in the vision is the one they dread to lose the most. It's, the, it's basically it's your eyes are the window to the world. Without the window, basically it's the fear of living in darkness is what a lot of patients have. Um, the number of diabetics, obviously, is about 4 million in the country at the moment. Obviously, there's a lot more with type 2 than type 1. Um, type 2, obviously, being more lifestyle as well. It's also diabetic retinopathy is one of the most common causes of sight loss in people of working age. Diabetics are at most risk of getting diabetic retinopathy. The, what increases the risk of getting the retinopathy at the back of the eye is duration of diabetes. So within of 20 years of getting diagnosis, nearly most of type 1 diabetics and about two thirds of um, people with type 2 will have some degree of retinopathy behind their eyes. Um, risk factor, or another one, is um, diabetic control. The poorer you control your diabetes, obviously, you're more likely to get changes at the back of the eye. Good control of diabetes doesn't prevent getting um, retinopathy, but it can delay the onset and obviously the severity. Gender um, also is another risk factor. Obviously, di diabetes tends to be more in the males than the females. So obviously, they're then more likely to get the retinopathy. Pregnancy um, is also to do with if they're basically if the diabetes wasn't controlled very well before pregnancy it can obviously lead to complications once you are pregnant as well. Hypertension, um, obviously if you don't control your blood pressure very well, that can also lead to changes at the back of the eye. Um, obesity, hyperlipidemia, smoking and anemia. What is diabetic retinopathy? Basically, diabetes affects the capillaries and arteries and the venules at the back of the eye. You can get macular, microvascular occlusion and leakage. So basically you get capillary changes. You can get deformation of red blood cells. So you get less oxygen transported within the back of the eye. Changes in platelets so that those platelets become more sticky and aggregate. So the blood vessels at the back of the eye can either swell, leak fluid or bleed. The symptoms what a patient would feel if they were having issues with their um, diabetes is like an increase in floaters, blurred or fluctuating vision, impaired color vision, dark empty areas within their vision and or vision loss. So there are two types of diabetic retinopathy that you can get. One is the early form, which is the most common. It's called the non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. New blood vessels are not growing. The walls of the blood vessels weaken. So basically, as an optician, what I see at, the, these, at these early stages are very small, like aneurysms, very small dot hemorrhages. Sometimes you can see some of the leakage, which looks like yellow patches within the retina um, and fluid. As if the diabetic retinopathy at this stage progresses, you can get more blood vessels can get blocked. The nerve fibers in the retina can also swell and they can swell around the macula. So the macula is the center part of your vision. So if you've had any issues like any scarring or blockage on the center part of your vision, if you're looking at someone's face, you won't be able to see their face, but you'll be able to see what's around them, basically. Then some people go to the advanced type of diabetic retinopathy, which is the more severe type. So the damaged blood vessels can close off and they start growing abnormal new blood vessels to grow, which can leak because the walls of the new blood vessels are very weak. Now they can leak into the jelly part of the eye, which is in the center part of your eye, which basically, and also if it forms scar tissue, which is stimulated by the growth of the abnormal blood vessels, it can lead to a retinal detachment. Um, so the complications of diabetic retinopathy include vitreous hemorrhages, retinal detachments, glaucoma um, and blindness. 
Diabetes can also affect the cornea of the eye as well. Um, so basically, you have an increase in glucose concentration. So we can end up getting recurrent erosions um, in the eye, delayed wound healing and edema, which obviously will affect your vision as well. So basically, what patients can do, obviously, as a diabetic, you should make, I find a lot of my diabetics, they don't know what the current blood sugar levels are. They don't monitor it enough at home. They just rely on the visits to the GP, which I feel is not enough. So a lot of them, when they turn up to practice, they don't know what the sugar levels are. A lot of them do admit that it is a bit high, which isn't great. Um, so obviously, it's very important for patients to attend all their GP appointments monitor the sugar at home but also attend regular eye tests um, once a year is what's recommended by the nhs if there are issues the optician will call you back every six months um, most places have the diabetic retinal screening program which is very important um, to attend every year because in the retinal screening program obviously they'll dilate you and take pictures of the back of the eye they then build up like a photographic diary of the back of the eye which is more of an accurate way of picking up early changes to anything happening on the retina at the back of the eye rather than just visiting the opticians. The opticians may not have the fundus camera in the store, um, so they just have to go on memory from what they've kind of written down and from previous visits as well. Obviously, managing the diabetes is very important um, for the eyes as well. They should also get the hemoglobin um, A1C test done as well keep the blood pressure and cholesterol under control, quit smoking. And obviously if they get, I always tell my patients, if they get any vision changes, get your sugar levels checked and get it checked out by the optician as well. So we can see what's causing um, the changes to the vision. One of my worst cases that I had, um, this was quite a few years ago, a gentleman was seen at his retinal, retinal screening program. He was advised by the doctor to um, that he was going to get laser done at the back of the eye. Unfortunately, the gentleman decided to go home for three months. He was on metformin. He then got bitten by an insect whilst he was abroad. The, I think the insect bite then got really badly infected, which infected his sugar levels. The doctor back in Somalia put him on insulin, which then played havoc on his sugar levels. Before he left, his vision was actually really good. It was about 2020. Um, upon coming back, I think the next day he came and saw us, he couldn't see. So in the space of the three months, what had happened to his vision had gone from good to bad. And I told him, I can't help you with your vision because obviously he left the country against what the doctor told him to do. Um, and the changes at the back of the eye meant I don't think they could help him as well. So it's very important to keep to your appointments and listen to your diabetic um, retinal screening program, especially if they tell you you need treatment and make sure you attend those appointments as well.